Hello and welcome to this month's Priority Report. In this month's report, I'll be highlighting a few topics, including the proposed CUNA bylaw amendments, issues to consider regarding internal fraud risks, thoughts on the Flint water crisis, the latest news on our Michigan Credit Union Act update, and the unmatched compliance resources that affiliated credit unions have access to uh, via CUNA and the Michigan Credit Union League. So to begin with, the CUNA board has now officially asked member credit unions nationally to vote on the proposed bylaw amendments that would allow direct membership with CUNA and allow the board, the CUNA board, to modify future bylaw changes, including those dealing with the size of the board and its ability to modify future CUNA dues levels. So these bylaw changes reflect a continuation of a process whereby CUNA is working hard to become a more responsive and valued resource to credit unions nationwide. On behalf of the Michigan Credit Union League, I urge our Michigan Credit Union community, if you haven't already done so, to vote in favor of the proposed bylaw changes. These changes will serve our industry well, as CUNA and leagues will now be more accountable to member credit unions for their respective value propositions. Now, on a related note, as our dues commitments come in this time of year, I want to take a moment to thank our credit union community, leaders of our Michigan credit unions, for supporting the Michigan Credit Union League, the Credit Union National Association, and our Michigan-based CU Link Cooperative Advertising Campaign, and other important initiatives like our state and federal PACs and our Stronger Financial Michigan Issue Advocacy Fund, as well as the Michigan Credit Union Foundation. So we ask for support, financial support, for a, a wide array of important initiatives, including, at the core, our state and national associations. And this support makes a huge difference as credit unions work together to make our industry stronger. That benefits all of us who care about the, uh, the credit union movement. And although we're still waiting for all of our affiliation checks to come in here in Michigan, I can report that based on the dues paid and the verbal commitments made, we expect to have a 97% affiliation rate with both CUNA and the Michigan Credit Union League this year in 2016. That is a phenomenal demonstration of your support for the Michigan Credit Union League and CUNA and the importance of them working together to achieve results, even in an environment where credit unions in Michigan now have dues choice the choice of making independent decisions for supporting a credit union national association and the Michigan Credit Union League and seeing the value of both. So I thank you on behalf of the Michigan Credit Union League Board of Directors and on behalf of CUNA for that showing of support. In fact, affiliation with the Michigan Credit Union League is expected to be even higher at a 99% level. We're expecting to have just one or two non-affiliates in 2016 and we will continue to encourage their support as well so again, I, I can't thank you enough for your financial support and as important for your engagement and participation in all of these important uh, uh, cooperative initiatives, whether it be advocacy or cooperative advertising or PACs. It means so much to our industry to have credit unions working together on these uh, collaborative initiatives. So relatedly, with the 50% uh, reduction in our league dues this year, conditional upon a minimum contribution to the CU Link Cooperative Advertising Campaign, of course, I can likewise report that we expect virtually all of our affiliated credit unions with MCL to also be supporting the CU Link campaign, at least at a minimal level. That means that we will have an unprecedented 99% level of support for promoting the credit union difference via the CU Link campaign here in Michigan. And close to a third of those credit unions will be at the full fair share supporter level. Of course, we'd like that number to be higher but uh, we'll work on making a stronger pitch for the value, uh, value proposition of being at the full share level. So what does that mean? That means that we will be able to do even more to promote the good works of credit unions this year in 2016 with our very innovative and compelling campaign called the STEPS Campaign. Now the second issue that I would like to address briefly is, is the need for improved readiness on the part of every credit union with regard to internal fraud risk exposure. In the aftermath of two recent embezzlement cases here in Michigan, I'm sure that every credit union in Michigan is having discussions in boardrooms and in management meetings regarding how credit unions can prevent similar losses from happening 
in every single credit union. Now the League has appointed an internal fraud risk working group headed by our own EVP Ken Ross, a former state regulator himself, and the working group will work with industry experts to identify the current requirements and best practices for fraud loss avoidance. We hope to have a report published in the spring and in the meantime I suggest if you're not already doing so that every credit union large and small consider at least the following steps. First, make sure that you have adequate internal controls and segregation of duties in your credit union. Employ a consultant if necessary to help you with the basics there. Second, expand the scope of your annual opinion audit to include necessary steps for verifying all major assets including loans and investments. Third, consider modernizing the function of your supervisory or audit committee to make sure that it is independent and focused on the right practices on behalf of the board and the credit union. Next, consider expanding your bond coverage and consult with your bond carrier for guidance on the proper controls that you need to have in place and the proper amounts of coverage that you ought to have. Another one is to seek best practice guidance from your peers on all of these things and other steps that well-protected credit unions take to mitigate these internal fraud risks. Credit unions manage other people's money, obviously, and there will always be both external and internal fraud risks. But taking the necessary steps to avoid catastrophic losses is a critical duty of every board of directors and CEO. Now I'd like to speak about another topic, uh, about the Flint water crisis. And this has been a big story here in Michigan, obviously. It's affected the political scene, both in Michigan and nationally. It's broken out on the national stage with the presidential election, and uh, we're hearing about this almost every day, seemingly, in terms of the crisis and uh, the concerns of Flint residents and others who are watching what has happened in Flint. And as with every challenge, this situation presents Michigan credit unions, particularly those in and around the Flint community, with an opportunity to question how best to contribute to the support of members and the communities that credit unions serve. In response to this uh, situation, this crisis, I applaud the recent efforts of Flint area credit unions that have, ex have been exploring ways to share information with members and to provide support in other ways. We've seen credit unions in the area directing members to the resources that they need for temporarily accessing bottled water, installing filters, gaining access to government assistance dollars, and of course, helping members know that credit unions are staying strong in the community to help with affordable financial services. The Flint chapter uh, of the MCL recently established a task force that our, Q, uh, that our league staff were a part of to look at both short-term and long-term ideas, even as many of these credit unions are already proactively helping their members. So the League looks forward to working with the chapter on this effort, and I know many of our credit union leaders across the state have asked how they can help. Well, right now I encourage you to support the efforts of the State of Michigan, the American Red Cross, the United Way, and other groups who have already set up fundraising and information sites. And if and when we create other credit union-centric solutions in cooperation with the Flint chapter, we'll be sure to share this information with our entire credit union community. Shifting to the advocacy front, we're expecting another successful CUNA Governmental Affairs Conference in Washington, D.C. at the end of February. More than 130 Michigan credit union professionals will take part, meeting with our congressional delegation, with NCUA board members, and with officials from the CFPB. We're also happy to have an opportunity at GAC to recognize our MCOL Federal Legislator of the Year, Congressman Tim Wahlberg from Michigan's 7th Congressional District who has been a key ally for credit unions and credit union issues in our delegation. This conference, which brings together thousands of credit union professionals and volunteers to the uh, CUNA GAC every year, showcases the importance of strength and unity across the credit union movement and the vital role that we can all play in federal advocacy efforts. Uh, the event is a stellar example of how CUNA and leagues work together on federal advocacy issues, both in terms of regulatory issues as well as legislative matters. We need a cohesive and an integrated credit union system to have any hope of being successful in Washington, D.C. for removing barriers and advancing the credit union cause. And closer to home, related to advocacy, here in Michigan, 
we continue to focus our efforts on getting our package of bills updating the Michigan Credit Union Act through the Senate and to the governor's desk by spring. As you recall, we wrapped up last year with a big victory when our bills passed nearly unanimously through the State House. Those bills are under consideration now by the Senate Banking Committee and hopefully soon the entire State Senate. And as of this taping, we're expecting to see the Senate during the first three weeks of March finalize this process. I personally want to thank Ken Ross and our, our entire lobbying team for the great progress that they've made with your help with our grassroots lobbying efforts. And uh, we're hopeful to see this legislation get passed uh, by Easter, certainly early in 2016. So it's important that our credit community continue to let our state senators now know how important it is that they support this package of bills that will help us modernize the, the State Credit Union Act, remove unnecessary regulatory barriers, and create an environment that is even more positive for credit unions to uh, take advantage of the state charter. So while we're working to meet and educate each of our senators individually to ensure that they understand our position and the benefits that uh, these uh, state act updates will provide for credit unions and their members, as we're doing that, we're especially focused on the Senate Banking Committee members and its chair, Senator Darwin Boer. We've had a very positive working relationship with the chairman, who was a lifelong small town community banker and to his credit, even though Senator Boer has a strong identification with the community bankers, we believe that he fully understands the unique and important positive role that credit unions play in communities across Michigan. And Senator Boer has displayed an ability to look at both sides of these issues. We're confident that uh, the, the strength of our public policy arguments will prevail and that he and his colleagues will give not only a, a fair hearing for this package of bills, but we'll pass them out favorably so that uh, they can be enacted into law. Now we believe we're still on track for a bill to be passed by spring and hopefully be, be to the governor by Easter or thereabouts. And we'll have more information on this on our website at mcl.org as the hearings progress and the bill makes its way toward the full Senate for a, a vote. So I appreciate your engagement and involvement in helping us to get this important State Credit Union Act update passed into law. Lastly, I want to briefly touch on MCUL and CUSG's vision for a total regulatory compliance solution. This is one of the four pillars of focus for MCUL. Uh, the four pillars that set the foundation for future success to benefit our member credit unions. We've seen tremendous consolidation in our industry over the last decade, as you know, and, and some of this can be tied back to the compliance burden placed upon credit unions. So it is more important than ever that your trade associations, CUNA, MCL, and sister leagues, develop a full dynamic suite of solutions to help credit unions of all sizes with compliance with federal and state regulations. So through our partnerships with CUNA and the League InfoSide organization, MCL is able to provide a host of compliance related services for credit unions. The CUNA League system works together to help credit unions with their top association priority, advocating, reducing, and complying with regulations. Now we do this by removing legal and regulatory barriers, something we talk a about a lot, providing credit unions with education and information for compliance, and we also offer implementation products like InfoSight, ComplySight, PolicyPro, and CU Vendor Management, as well as consulting services to assist with the management of regulatory compliance. We continue to work to enhance and streamline examination standards in our communications with state and federal regulators as well because we recognize that improving the examination processes is also a part of reducing regulatory burden. On the drawing board, we also plan to introduce a new uh, IT risk assessment product and uh, surely other services in the months and years ahead as part of this total uh, compliance uh, solution that we're trying to work toward. So CUNA and your league are constantly working together and collaborating to make sure that the support that is provided, the resources that are accessed, and the tools that are available to you are of the highest uh, quality possible. So I hope that you'll take advantage of all of these offerings, most of which are a benefit of affiliation with the Michigan Credit League and CUNA. 
Well, I hope you found this uh, edition of Priority Report valuable. You can find the written version online at mcl.org, along with access to all of the resources that I've mentioned in this report. We welcome your feedback on any of the issues discussed today, and I personally want to thank you again as credit union leaders for your strong support of the Michigan Credit Union League and CUNA again in 2016 as we work together to strengthen our credit union charters, both the state and federal charters, to promote the credit union difference via the CU Link campaign and other media interactions, and to provide great solutions, including our education offerings, uh, in support of credit unions' need to offer excellent services to their members. And fourth, this idea of a total comprehensive compliance solution, we're committed to that fourth pillar, and we appreciate you considering taking advantage of those services and help it, helping us make sure that they're always top-notch. So thanks again for listening.